Hello and welcome to the Data Literacy video channel where we dive into the complexities of data and AI to help you grasp and apply them. I'm Ben Jones, your host, and today we're going to break down the different levels of artificial intelligence. Okay, so there's ANI, AGI, GPAI, and even ASI. So what are all these acronyms? You know, what do they stand for? What do they mean? And why does it matter? Now, this is a topic I cover in my recent book and course, AI Literacy Fundamentals. This book features some brilliant illustrations and diagrams that were created by Ali Torben. She's the author of Chartspark. She's the host of the popular podcast, Data Viz Today. I think you're gonna love it, so let's dive right in. Now, we'll start with the lowest level of AI that we'll consider here in the video, artificial narrow intelligence, or ANI. Sometimes this is referred to as weak AI, and this type of AI is designed to perform a single task whether that's playing chess or recommending products online or unlocking your phone based on a scan of your face. While these tasks can seem sophisticated, ANI can't step beyond the relatively narrow parameters of the specific function they've been designed to perform. And virtually all of what we've been interacting with up until the past couple of years has been ANI. Okay, next up is artificial general intelligence, or AGI. Now, this is a hypothetical AI that could perform any intellectual task that a human being can. So a single instance of AGI could be capable of learning, understanding, and applying knowledge in completely new ways. So that would bridge the gap across all human uh, capabilities from image detection, language processing, reasoning, problem solving, and decision making across a bunch of different domains, right? So remember, this type of AI doesn't exist yet. That's why we call it hypothetical, and it may never exist. It's sometimes also referred to as strong AI in contrast to weak AI, which we just considered. But certain philosophers like John Searle, who coined the terms strong AI and weak AI back in 1980, when they refer to it as such, they also mean strong AI would actually have consciousness or sentience. But most people today don't necessarily define AGI in this way. So they're really opting instead to, you know, sidestep the question of consciousness because it's a very tricky subject in and of itself. And we can't even say we fully understand the nature of human consciousness. So most people just stick with the idea of tasks and what they can and can't do. Okay, so next up we have general purpose AI or GPAI. And, you know, this is a little confusing, isn't it? Because this level also includes the word general, even though it isn't the same thing as artificial general intelligence, or AGI. This is a newer term. It was introduced in the recently passed European Union AI Act. And what does it refer to? Well, it refers to AI models that can perform a broad range of tasks using large data sets they've been trained upon. So I want you to think of technologies like OpenAI's GPT and DALI, Anthropic's Claude, Meta's Llama, all of these new LLMs are able to generate human-like text, images, audio, and even video sometimes, and they create it across some various contexts, but they're not fully capable of performing any intellectual task that a human can. And so we can probably place GPAI then somewhere in between ANI and AGI, because the foundational AI models that have been released since 2022 are a major step up in capabilities from what we've historically called ANI. But even though they're a big step up, they're still quite limited and they're nowhere near the level of AGI, most experts would agree. Okay, so finally we have artificial superintelligence or ASI. Now this is often just referred to as superintelligence and we're talking about a level of AI which would go beyond even AGI. So ASI would not only mimic or replicate human intelligence, but it would vastly surpass our intelligence in every way, leading to transformations in society that we can't even imagine. Now, University of Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom wrote about this in his book, Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, and Strategies. Now, ASI is firmly in the realm of science fiction, and it's very important to point out that this level of AI is totally hypothetical. And many AI experts doubt that such an agent will ever exist. 
okay, there you have it, right? These different levels of AI are not the same thing. And unfortunately, when someone uses the term AI, it isn't always clear what they're referring to. So being able to understand the differences between these levels of AI can help us avoid confusing conversations in which we're talking about one thing and the other person's assuming we're talking about something totally different. And so for a deeper dive into these concepts, check out my new book, AI Literacy Fundamentals. And thanks for watching.